you boy today working on the Dodge 97 Dodge. This will work on multiple applications. It's a multi-purpose. The Airlift Load Lifter 5000. So you can't really tell here, but I pull trail a lot. It's sagging on the back end. I was gonna just do the shocks. Then I'll do like a thousand pounds of lift. So I'm like, screw it. It's the same price. I'm gonna go with airbags. Um, I should've went with the shocks. It's less work. So we're gonna get started. As you can see, first thing I already did is I removed the fender well. All right, there's like six plastic rivets in there. I'm gonna show you on the other side where they are real quick. So, you got a push pin here, you got one under here somewhere under that dirt, you got a push pin, a push pin, a push pin, you got two screws for the mud flaps, and then some push pins under there, it pops out, I think there might even be one up top, alright, we're going to get started, we're going to show that and we'll come back in a few and show you where we're at. Guys, we're going to get to work, you're going to need the small plate right here, okay, see that, see that, you're going to take this right here. Oh, I didn't even show you. It's going to come without everything attached. There's this here. It's already pre-threaded with like a gooey nylon, so you don't have to nylon thread tape it. This pivots. So these plates don't come on them. You just set them on there. You put one on top, one on the bottom, and you take these shorter bolts that come with it, and you got a lock washer and then a regular washer. And hold on. All right, everybody. So you want to test it out after you put it on there. You're like, oh, what? put what on? I'm sorry, I didn't actually show you doing it, okay? These are 15 millimeters. Lock washer, that. Put it on. You want to make sure this is more to the back, and you want to face it on this side that way, but it doesn't matter. It's a swivel. So then you want to set it in here on top of your leaf springs to get an idea of what you're going to do, okay? And you want to pretty much even it out. I brought a leveling case, but that's it. Look, we have this. This is a Dodge. So we have some spacers in here that I'm gonna have to use and I'm gonna show you. If you have a Ford or Chevy, they say you don't. I wanna bring it in close, see if you can see this. The frame dents in, okay? Now, before I start drilling, I gotta go under here. Um, see these plastic? There's some wires, I have to move them so that I don't clip them. And then we can start drilling and mount her up. And once you get one, you go to the other side and then we gotta run the hoses and shit. So, that's probably shouldn't be custom. There we go. That's that. I'm gonna go in here and get these wires out before I start mounting that. See you in a few. Okay, so we're gonna mount these up so that we can get it lined up and then I'm gonna have to find the spacers for that. But let's get this. You wanna get five to eight inches, okay? Between this bracket and this bracket. As you can see, I'm at seven and a half, so I'm good. If you're not, and you need to get taller, you're gonna need these spacers and they go under here to brace up, okay? We don't need that. I need the long U-bolts. They have short ones. If you only have a three-leaf spring system, you can use that. I can't. So let's put these on. You got a flat washer and locking nuts. The nylon threaded nuts. They come in there. Oh, that ain't gonna work. These are long, long bolts. And deep lock. So we're gonna need a deep socket if we want to tighten these on. Mm. I almost want to cut these off after because that's ridiculous length. We're gonna get this here. Um, while you do this, you're gonna to want to look and make sure before you start mounting that <coughs> your holes are gonna be on your frame rail. So I'm gonna to have to use the second hole and the top hole on both sides because this one's gonna to be too low. And this one's going to be right on the indention. So that's how we're going to have to mount it. And you want to measure front to back to make sure it's pretty even. I'm at two and a quarter and two and a quarter. So there we go. Well, uh, as you can see, we're using DeWalt to speed things up on the tightening of things. I'm not helping this because we need to go get a deep socket so we can tighten this down. And the big locking washer. So, all right. Oh, back to what we were doing. Oh, we're not going to be able to reach that if we mount it. We'll have to slide it back and forth afterwards. There is a nut right here. It was a 15, 13, 13. And it uh, holds the brake lines to the back. 
that you're going to have to drill. You wouldn't have to worry about it there, but they go right here. So you have to loosen them and move them out. You also have to move those plastic wires for the electrical system. So we got some Loctite on there. We're letting it sit. We got this set up. We're going to go to town on that with the impacts again. Yay. See you in a little bit. Ready? All right. Get it all mounted up. We tighten these down a little. Probably shouldn't tighten down that much, but uh, to hold it in place. Center punch. I have a regular one. This is an automatic center punch. I'm going to give it a try. Some people like them. I never used one. But this is what you do. You stick it in the middle and it's spring loaded. So you go like this. Find where you want it. And there you go. Yeah, that actually is nice. It's a lot nicer than having to ding them in. So this will tell you where you need to mount, where you need to make your holes at. Okay. It's kind of difficult. So if you can find one of these and they work, I'd get one. It's much easier than trying to hammer. Let's see if we got it. Those don't look like they made marks, do they? There's one. I don't see it on that side. Lined up. See this one. This is really difficult. Okay. There's a hole. There it is. Okay, is that it? Yep, okay, good. Good. These ones I'm not real happy with. There we go. We're gonna loosen this up. If I can slide it out of the way. We can drill. Okay, we can drill these two without removing it. Let's see if we can slide it the other way. Mm -hmm. You know what? Yeah, we can. Okay, so if you do it like this, you can get in there, you can drill without it, okay? We're gonna do the front ones first because we don't have to worry about hitting anything there. All right, get a 3-8 uh, cobalt drill bits is what you're gonna need. Uh, I had to go buy some new ones, and I just bought some crappy ones too as a backup. But uh, cobalt's cutting through hard steel, okay? So we're going to do this, 3 8 we You're going to start with a smaller one to get it through that metal, because the big 3 8s not going to go right away. So start at like a 532 and work your way up, all right? We got to do this. We will show you the back in a few. Make sure you got an electric drill. Battery drill's not going to do it. All right, bye-bye. All right, so as you can see, I got that. That was only like 10 seconds drilling, so that's why it's best to go with cobalt. Uh, and even any time you can, if you're drilling heavy steel, get a nice little oil on it uh, so that the bit doesn't overheat. I'm using this right here, okay? I'm going to spray a little on the drill bit right there uh, so it doesn't get too hot, all right? Fill it up a little, so here we go. Ready? That's all I gotta be careful. Uh, let me check, make sure I didn't hit nothing. I think I'm good. Reach around and yeah, that area is clear. So I'm through. Now I have to get the next size drill bit in. Like I said, you want to go smaller so that it uh, pushes through easy. That was 20 seconds, maybe. Go with a cobalt bit, guys. You won't be there all day using one of them other crappy. Three, it's the biggest bit I have here. So, kind of feel like I should go a size in between, but we're going to see what happens. I might be able to put this three eighths right in there. Be careful with the cobalt because as you can see I 
plowed through. You don't want to cut your brake lines back there. You're screwed. It's like the strongest cap ever. Just put it on the boot. Measure up with the bolts, they're the black ones. Uh, see how this looks and see if all my punches are good. Of course, now it's stuck here. And you're up. All right, guys, so we got the spacers. I had to use two because this is a Dodge behind these two. One up top, none anywhere else, okay? So, <clears throat> the spacers kind of sucks if you got to dodge this indent. Got everything in, tighten these down real good. And make sure after you get it done to tighten the bolts on the top here and the bottom that hold the airbag in place because then the bag will be where it needs to be. Uh, make sure you have the, oh, it does leak if I move it. See that? Wow, that's not good. Hear that? If it just turns a little, it leaks. So. Let me see if I can shove the airbag in a little more. It's fine if it's not moving. Oh, it wasn't in all the way. That was it. Okay, so make sure you shove your airline all the way into its bottom of the seat. And if not, it was leaking, now it's good. All right, we zip tied here. You wanna make sure you get those back in. Um, you want to cut your, drill, your airline in half, equal lengths, and then you want to run this first before you do that. I ran the other one now. This is your best way. It comes with two separates. Uh, some of the systems, if you have an automatic air, have a T, and then they mix together and only have one thing. So I put it on a license plate so you can easily drive up and just do, 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 done. And mine didn't have bolts there already. Uh, you're going to need to drill. What was the drill that we used? Is this the final? Let's see. We needed to use a 5 16 drill bit to get the right size to make the hole. Um, Measure, double measure, measure again, cut once. Um, make sure you have a nice clean cut on the airline. Is there anything, dude, do you think that we did that we need to talk about? Make sure you have some oil for it. Get the cobalt bits, it'll save you a lot of time. Uh, you want a jack stand to hold the frame. You want to chalk your tires. You want to put a jack or another jack stand under the actual axle. The jack's better so you can move it up and down to help your spacing. Remember to measure this, seven, five to eight inches. Make sure you measure this way. Tighten everything good. Uh, make sure you move the brake lines off the back side or you're gonna punch it. And there is a fuel tank here, so if you have a long drill bit and you go all the way through, you're hitting your fuel tank. Barely go through, do it nice and slow. Um, you're gonna get lots of metal shavings. Ow, we're at 30 PSI, we can't test it now. We might show you a video at the very end after we're done testing up and down. I think that's it. Um, the other side's easier, so we're not going to video it for you. Oops, gotta pick up that stuff. There is no lines of any kind under the frame. You just do it, drill through, put it on. Make sure, like I said, you don't tighten those bolts on top of the airbag until after, so you know where they go. Make sure try that center punch. This was a lifesaver. The automatic punch. This was way better than trying to sit there and hammer in there. Get an automatic punch. This I got at Menards. Some of them have bad ratings, so if you buy them online, read up. Because some supposedly punch and don't do it again. I can't think of anything else. 
Hopefully you don't need too many spacers the way you're sitting. They didn't give me enough. If I needed one more spacer, we would have been screwed. We might still be screwed. We're gonna find out when we get to our side. Um, that's it in case I forget, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna video at the end and show you. But if not, that's it. You got any questions asked, I'll try to answer them, but I may not have them. As always, I'm RJ. Seize the day each and every day. We're there, got it on, got both sides. Got it mounted good. Down here in the air leaks, I'm gonna use some soapy water later to check it and see what's happening. But looks like we're good, we're in. We're gonna put these tires back on. Here is both of my air. And where'd I put the nozzles? Here there. Oh, there's my other zip tiles looking for. That sucks. I can use that one. So, yep, I got the air gauge in there. Put the caps back on. Probably shouldn't be showing my last place, but I don't think it really matters. Um, there we go, we're in here, we're both inside. Um, when you put your fender well back on, which we can't do today because you can't reuse these when I do, I took them out with a punch, okay? Three eighths, a, one, a quarter inch punch, and you just took the little, they're like this, see them? And you punch them out and they fall through. They're like, oh, they're reusable, they're not reusable. So I'm going to have to buy new ones and put the fender well back in, and then I'm going to have to screw the mud flaps back on. But, yeah, there we go. Uh, we're going to put the tires on, see how it holds up to the weight. You're going to look at it, you're going to be like, good Lord, that's pretty. That's pretty sweet. All right? So I'm going to show you after we get it all filled up, and we'll lift it and see how it holds up because I had a lot of sag. And, yeah, that's it. See you in a few minutes. Okay, everybody. So we got it out. We pulled it out. We got the tires back on. Um, are you filling up now? Yep. Okay, watch this. Did you see that? It just gained, it was up to 10. They used to sit at like eight. We're at 10. He just got it 10 and a half. Are you at the 70 already? 70 right now. Okay, let me go the other one. Pause it. 10. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. We're at 10 PSI. Here we go, look at it go. Tell us more at 70. 70. We gained an entire inch of lift at 70 PSI. And that's what the airbag was already holding. It was at, what'd you say, 10? 10. So 10 was already holding it up. Mm. And just the airbag's height holds it. This, these were sagging, if you'd seen my videos working, it, it was just down. Did you do 70 on the air side? 70. Okay, we're at 11 inches, where are we at now? Eh, you sure it's not low? It's a little lower on this side. Oh, it could be the tire. It could be the tire. Yeah. That one's got more tread. Yeah, I'm at... Ten and a half inches. Yeah. This tread's going to <laughs> Oh yeah, this is the one with the meaty tread. And I'm at eleven and a quarter. There we go, seventy-two. They gained a little. They gained a quarter inch. Okay. So your video, Kristen? No. Yeah. Okay. So we're running at seventy just to go test it out. You're like, wow, that's a little high. It's always gonna be pulling a trailer. I'm gonna, after the trailer loads are on, we're gonna see what I need more. But if you can't tell, it's up in the air. We wouldn't be able to pull in this garage. We did on the way in. There's no way now we'd be rubbing the garage. We were close anyway. Look at it, shoot, just the back end is 16 inches from hitting the roof, all right? What, people, you're like people that watch me know that I do weird stuff and check like weird Winston things. You're like Winston Bishop. Why? Me whenever he learned how to use a ruler, a ruler he's shot. measuring I know everything. how to use it. Okay, <laughs> so there we go. We're gonna go give this a test drive. We're gonna video while we're driving. Let you see. We'll see if it feels different, it's stiffer, looser, whatever. It's probably gonna be. But yeah, it looks way better. They were. The back was shorter. See, we're running nine here, eight and a half, nine. That was less. I have pace. Okay, so that's it. Yeah, in case I don't video in a minute while we're driving, that's it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. The hardest side is the driver's side because there's a fuel tank, there's brake lines, and there's electrical wires that you got to pop out, put back in. Zip tight, you got it. Um, we're going to have to check it, I said, for leaks later, but I think we're good to go. That's it. As always, I'm RJ. Seize the day. Each and every day. I'm back. We got it in. We're gonna give this a try. I can already feel it sitting in here. I'm looking more down. So let's get ready to get this on the road. Oh yeah, listen to that baby purr. All 360 cubic inches. Kind of 
kind of feels funny. Let's see. It's pretty smooth actually. There's no like, when you drove in here before, like how it's doing it a little up front, it used to go like, glunk, 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 glunk. It's, it's smooth. It's a little stiff. We went to 70 PSI and we don't have anything on it, no trailer, so it's not sitting down at all. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, got them on there. Brakes seem good. Got the check engine light because I need to fix the uh, catalytic converter and put the sensor rack in. But you know, see like this guy, look at his truck. His Dodge is sagging a little. He doesn't have air lifts. It's not horrible yet, but he don't have air lifts. Good Lord, that truck's been out. Talking about my truck, Jesus. And he's got one black room like me. He's trying to be like RJ. We're gonna take this down here so we can get a little more speed and see how they feel on these bumps. Right now. Now I feel like I need to get new front springs in the front. It's kind of like blunk, blunk, blunk. Especially that end right there. It's like. So after you're all on, what's going to happen is, remember this fender wall you took off? Well look, what would it hit? Right here. So that's what this extra bag is for. The Dodges need it, it said, maybe others. So here's this hole. You're going to have to put this spacer here, look, and these bolts. And as you can see, then the fender well will go right here. Because if not, your fender well will rub on here and possibly cut the airbag in. Boom. So look, lots of clearance show them all around. Like the sticker here. Clearer than that, but you can see there's that, there's that, it sticks out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty sweet. Like I said, right now I got it 70 psi, and with that 70 psi, I'm running uh, 11 inches Hunt. right here, Hunt. so I can lower it a little when not. But I think that's gonna hold enough weight for when I pull my trailer, so I might just leave it at 70. We'll see. It looks good, feels a little funny. Truck's leaning forward, and then that fender. Is a little low on mine. These are this side is an inch shorter than that side. So we're gonna have to figure out Was why. It this one? Yes. Oh, okay. You can see it from here a little. Come here, show them right here. You might be able to see it in the video. It's leaning. Um, it's hard to tell on the road though. But we did it. And it's an inch difference in the uh, fender well almost. So. Figure that out. I either need the springs fixed. Uh, I don't think the shocks would do that. Maybe the bushings. Uh, I don't think the ball joints would have that effect, but maybe. Uh, maybe springs are the original, so I might have to get new ones. We'll figure it out. Alright. As you can see, look. Got a little while, but it's not horrible. I mean, it's not great. One, two, three. That's a shock. But the springs might have a little effect on that too. Let's see what this side does. Ready? Not as much. It's still rocked a while. And that'd be the shock. With the shocks I replaced uh, like six years ago. I don't think they'd be bad, but maybe they will because of the truck sagging. Might have worn out. Alright. Well, that's it, guys. I hope it helped you. Again, like my fifth video where I said this. <laughs> kept thinking it was the end. As always, I'm RJ. See you today, each and every day.